Recombinases are enzymes that cause genetic recombination. Here we have an example of tray recombinase excising a proviral DNA segment. Researchers use recombinases, including Cre recombinase, to allow them to edit the genome in predictable ways. This is done by targeting recombination to occur at specific base parasites, such as the red DNA segments seen in this video. Recombinases are therefore a tool for researchers to control gene expression. Pre-recombinase is short for cyclization recombination because its recombination mechanism works in a cyclic fashion. Cre is an enzyme derived from the P1 bacteriophage. Its function is to catalyze recombination between two LOXP sites. LOXP is short for locus of crossing over of bacteriophage P1. LOXP is a 34 base pair DNA recognition site to which Cre recombinase catalyzes homologous recombination. In the middle of this 34 base pair sequence is an 8 base pair sequence, known as the core sequence. The asymmetry of the sequence confers the directionality of the site, which conventionally is notated by the direction the triangle points. This core sequence is where recombination occurs. The core sequence is flanked by two 13 base pair palindromic and inverted repeats to which each monomeric subunit of creep binds to. There are several types of recombination that can be performed using Cre. The most common ones are translocation, inversion, and deletion. In translocation, in which the LOXP sites are on different DNA strands, Cre swaps the LOXP sites as well as the DNA sequences that follow the sites. In inversion, in which the LOXP sites point towards each other on the same DNA strand, the gene in the middle merely gets inverted. Deletion is the most commonly used. The LOXP sites point the same direction and flank a targeted gene. Cree causes a recombination between the LOXP sites and ends up deleting the target gene from the genomic sequence, leaving behind one LOXP site in the genome. Deleting the target gene is called floxing the gene. On a single DNA strand, the Cree would be in a dimer containing two monomeric subunits. There are two domains in each subunit. The domain displayed on top here is the amino terminal domain containing five alpha helices. This domain interacts with the major group of the DNA strand. The bottom domain is the carboxyl terminal domain, containing 9 alpha helices and 3 beta strands. This domain participates in DNA and intersubunit interactions. This domain also contains Cree's active site. Each monomer is bound to half of the LOX P site at the inverted repeats. The core sequence resides in the middle. When two DNA strands are involved in recombination, Cree is in a tetrameric complex in which the dimers on each strand interact. The green line separates the two dimers. Each dimer wraps around a LOXP site on each DNA strand. In a tetrameric complex, there are now four subunits. The blue lines and the green lines separate each subunit. The four subunits actually create a hydrophobic cavity in the middle, which is where the strand exchanges occur. Cree has an active site on each monomer, therefore it has four active sites. Unlike many other recombinases, such as the FLP recombinase, the active site is not shared between different subunits in Cree. The active site contains a catalytic triad containing two arginines and a histidine. It also contains important nucleophilic residues, a tyrosine and a tryptophan. The tyrosine is particularly important because it is what performs a nucleophilic attack on a phosphate in the DNA strand. The other amino acids then coordinate the cleavage of the DNA strand. This can be seen in the mechanism of Cree's recombination. We begin with each of the four subunits, in yellow, attached to two DNA double strands, with a dimer on each strand. Beginning with the synapse, two tyrosines from two active sites attack phosphates in two DNA strands. This causes the tyrosines to be attached to the phosphate groups, leaving behind two free hydroxyl groups. The hydroxyl groups then attack the phosphate groups attached to the tyrosines to bind together strands from each of the DNAs. This intermediate is known as a holiday intermediate. Then the mechanism repeats. Tyrosines attack phosphate groups on the DNA strands. The free hydroxyl groups attack the phosphates attached to the tyrosines. And finally, the recombinant DNA products are formed. What would make a researcher pick to use Cree over other available recombinases? The first reason is that Cree only has two requirements in order to allow it to function, the Cree enzyme itself and two LOXP sites. Unlike many other recombinases, it does not have additional requirements such as cofactors, sequence elements, accessory proteins, etc. 
The second reason is that Cree can be used in any cellular environment, such as mammalian cells, yeast cells, in vitro, and in vivo. Additionally, Cree can be made to be tissue-specific by putting it behind tissue-specific promoters. This makes Cree only be expressed in specific cells and tissues and only cause recombination in those specific cells and tissues. This is called a conditional gene knockout, in which a gene is knocked out only in the specific organ or tissue. The third reason is that Cree recombinase enzyme works quickly, effectively, and with high precision. Its rate of synapses is Kd equals 10 nanomolars, considered to be a rate of high affinity, and it will only form synapses with lox P sites with a very low possibility of causing recombination elsewhere. And lastly, Cree has a wide variety in how it can be used. As discussed previously, it can be used in gene deletion, inversion, and translocation, but it can also be used in insertions, activations, and many other modifications. These benefits in using Cree bring about endless possibilities and Cree's implications in biological research. It is considered to be a revolutionary tool in genetic engineering.